Hello, business building warrior. Welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio. My name is Jim Cockrum. I'll be the host today. I'll be bringing on a couple guests with us here in just a couple minutes, as we've done so many times in the past. We love to help people build beautiful businesses using the internet creatively and then share their stories if they're willing to come on to our show and talk about their journey. And today we meet a married couple who actually live on the north side of the same town that I'm in. We've never met face to face. Uh, we will soon. We've got our upcoming annual conference that we talk about a little bit on today's episode. We'll be seeing them there and hopefully you'll be there with us. That's theprovenconference.com is the website, theprovenconference.com. Go check it out. We still got some tickets left as I'm recording this May 23rd through 25th in Orlando. There'll be a link in the show notes at silentgym.com as well to all of this. But the couple I'm bringing on, they're students of the Proven Amazon course, which is the flagship training course of this podcast and our community. And they're also coaching students. They talk about the journey that they've had so far in being able to build a very healthy five-figure business at a very healthy 34% ROI in just a few months. They're really killing it. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're doing a great job and they share their journey, how they're sourcing, how they've kind of tag teamed together as a married couple to tackle each side of the business and the impact that it's had on them and their schedule. They're both full-time employed. So they've had to squeeze this into the extra time in their week, but the trajectory they're on, their goal is to sell six figures this year. And I think they'll easily hit that with what they've got in place. Again, they're using the beginning level Amazon seller training that we emphasize in this community that is ideal for someone who doesn't have any past e-commerce or business experience, but they want to step into this arena and build a real business. And as you hear them talk about today, Silas, the gentleman on the show today, He's looking for financial stability outside of his career in case something were to happen someday. He wants to have this side gig already established, and it's taken off far faster than they ever imagined, and they're really having a blast with it. Well, hopefully you enjoy this show. I just want to remind you one time, I mentioned this most episodes lately, that we've got a free book we'd love to put into your hands. This is a book that has sold over a million copies. It's got thousands of five-star reviews on Amazon that you could go see. But here's the website where you can get the book completely free, download it, or have it sent straight to your smartphone. Go to this website, silentgym.com slash free one one, the number 11, one one. And that is version 11 of the Silent Sales Machine book that launched this community. It was updated. It's coming up on a year or so ago, but it is 100% ready and relevant and helps you decide which of all of the incredible creative income stream opportunities online might make the most sense for you. It really helps you think through that process. Now that we've coached nearly 10,000 people in our community to e-commerce success, <clears throat> excuse me, for the past 20 years, we've been doing e-commerce coaching. We've learned some things. And that book breaks down some of the things that we've learned, the, the lessons that we've shared over time, the observations we've made that can really help keep you from making a bad mistake and keeps you focused in the right direction of where the real opportunities are for you and the season of life that you're in. So enjoy that book on the house. Again, silentgym.com slash free. One, one, get you a free version, uh, free version 11 of that book. Well, God bless you, business building warrior. Great hanging out with you today. Let's jump over and meet my new friends, Silas and Christine Anderson. You're going to enjoy this interview. So Silas and Christine, welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio. Good to see you guys. Hey, thanks, Jim, for having us on. We really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. I'm looking forward to getting to know you guys a little bit. And uh, we didn't talk about this before we hit record, but are you guys neighbors? I saw the area codes comment similar. <laughs> no, no, we're, we're married. No, 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 we're your neighbor. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Our> neighbors. <laughs> I was going to hold on just a second. Oh, God, that is awesome. No. What a bad start already. <laughs> no, no, that's a great way to start an episode. Everybody's like, oh, good. They're real people. Yeah. <laughs> No, I love it. Yeah. So no, I saw you have the same area code I do on your phone. Yeah. So we you live in the same vicinity, which I I think I knew that at one point when we were. Yes. Up for you. Where, so where are yeah. you guys out in the area? Yeah, we're in Carmel. 
Okay, you're North Siders. We're the very yeah. far north side of Carmel. Indy's mm-hmm. very much divided into uh, two worlds, North Siders <laughs> and South Siders, right? It, it's yeah. like a little bit of uh, Chicago on the north side and a little bit of Kentucky on the south side. It's two <laughs> that totally that is worlds. a good way to, to break it down for those who don't know the Hoosier <laughs> State. Yeah. Well, it's good getting to know you guys a little bit. I'm really looking forward to diving into your story. If you guys are ready, let's let's jump in. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yep. So tell me about your, your e-commerce journey. It, it balls in your court. Okay. So I think for us, so we had, you know, my wife, Christine, she has sold a little bit on eBay over many years okay. on and off. I think for us is where we did start was with eBay. And really it started because we're getting older. We have a daughter that's in high school now. She's not going to be here that much longer. You know, it's only going to be three more years and she'll be off to college, hopefully. So for us, it came down to a couple of things. One, just looking around in our house, we've accumulated so much junk over the years that I decided, hey, let's start trying to just get rid of some of this stuff that we don't need because there's no point in having it here. That makes sense. So, yeah. And so we started doing that. And then I started hearing some from a different, um, from some Facebook videos about uh, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, selling on eBay, things such as that. So we started to give that a little bit of a try. I think in November, yeah, yeah right, I think we started buying some things right around Black Friday to give that a try. And we weren't having a ton of luck selling anything. I mean, we were selling some things, but we weren't having a ton of luck on eBay. And I was talking to Christine. And I said to her, or we were talking in general, so she has a cousin that is actually a member of the group. Um, He's been on the podcast before. Uh, He's been on your podcast before. So Ray Hunt, if it's okay if I mention his name. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been a while, but I know the name. Yeah, so he would, we were, she talked to him because, well, I said to back up a little bit, I said, there's got to be a better way to do this. I know you can sell on Amazon. Amazon is the 600 pound gorilla in the room. I That's said, right. how do you do that? How do you, how does someone get involved in doing that? She had reminded me her cousin does it. It's her cousin and his wife, they support a family of six doing it. And they have for many, many years, very mm-hmm. successfully. So she talked to him and started talking to him and he said, okay, well, here's where I learned, you know, most of the stuff I learned to get our business started. And he referred us to the Facebook page. Outstanding. Now that name, correct me if I'm wrong, but Ray's been around a long time in our community. Has he not? A long yes. time. Like yeah. 18 years or something. I would, I would say at least 10 to 15, maybe yeah. more. He's, yeah. He, he I remember, long, it seems like I remember him from the eBay days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It would sound like a really long time. So. Yeah. Okay. That Ray. Gotcha. Well, that's really cool. So tell him I said, Hey, and to make himself known, I haven't seen that name pop up uh, in, in quite a while. Uh, but that's great. So your cousin referred you in and you, you were goofing around a little bit on eBay. So what did you, yes. what kind of stuff did you sell on eBay, Christine? Just give me some, like any highlights, <laughs> did anything work out? Anything, well anything. That anything I, wasn't nailed down except um, the kids? <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Silas actually went on a massive buying spree of underwear, men's underwear specifically. Which we still have a lot of. So, so if anyone here is watching <laughs> these underwear, we had to cover so I got we, you. We a Christmas, Christmas gifts for everyone, huh? Yeah, that's exactly what we thought. So we thought underwear. Silas has a massive love for music. And so he had amassed quite a collection of CDs, some used, some very rare, some still new in the package. Gotcha. So we sold okay. quite a few of those. You sold on 4K movies. 4K movies, yeah. Kind I mean, of anything in the house that wasn't nailed down that we didn't need. Yeah, yeah I got pretty you. much. Yeah, and, and some of that stuff, some of the CDs, like even cassettes. You know, there's worth considerable money if you hold on to those yes. any of those old '80s, '90s cassettes. Man, those are pulling yes. some cash now. Right? Yes, yeah. I mean we we probably sold hundreds. You know, yeah. and Ooh. and. Uh, two month period, probably Mm -hmm. hundreds Mm -hmm. of CDs. So the mailman was probably very thankful when (laughs) we're done with that phase. (laughs) Is the purge over yet guys? Yeah. Yeah. And and that, 
you know, that's what gets a lot of people into e-commerce is just kind of realizing, hey, we got stuff around here that could be money. Let's sell some of it. And then you run out of that stuff pretty quick. I mean, even a hoarder runs out of stuff pretty fast. So right. like, all right, what do we do now? What, you know, I've got the bug. I've, I'm selling stuff online. What next? And that's kind I of think what a, you guys were. Yeah, exactly. I think a big thing for me personally was that I we both work for Fortune 500 companies. Okay. So mm-hmm. our employment is totally at the mercy of Fortune 500 companies. And whether you have good earnings or bad earnings, you know, my company, they've laid folks off. Uh, they've been very successful. We've done layoffs, you know, every three or four years. I think a lot of companies do that. Yeah. And for me, it kind of got to the point of like, I'm getting to the point now in my life that I don't want to be at the mercy of someone deciding that, hey, you know what, you're the whole department's being let go to so because our earnings are down or something such as that. So I wanted to look for a way that we could build a future for ourselves, regardless, and not have to count on someone else for our income. Yeah. So be able to find a way to do that. The other thing that I thought too is maybe that if we could grow this into a business successfully something my daughter or we've talked to one of our nieces about maybe doing some shopping for us. She's in college now. You know, it could be a way that we could help other people learn to start a business too. We don't know what we're doing, but hopefully we'll learn and we'll be able to, you know, maybe it would give us an opportunity to pass that along to some other folks. So that that was a really big part of it. Those are some of the driving forces. Yeah. That fi- that that <laughs> search for financial stability, financial independence. Right. I don't I'm not reliant on a you know a paycheck. The way I parse it is you can have one customer, which is working for a company that someone signs your front of your paycheck. That's your customer. You got one customer, right. whoever signature that is, that's who you work for. Or you can have a bunch of customers. Yeah. Or you can do both, right? Have your job and the stability that comes from the benefits and instantly yeah. transition into this world. If worst case scenario happens, you've got the safety net right. you've been building for a while. And I think it's a borderline irresponsible not to have something on the side, the way the world is now and how easy it is to get into these other income streams online, right. build something, like you said, substantial that could be passed on. You can incorporate family. And that's certainly my reality. I've got right now, as I'm sitting here, well, I see my son in the front yard with our dog. So he's not at the warehouse, which is where he is a lot of days. <laughs> Most days he is, but my mom, my aunt and friends at our warehouse, others around the world who are on our team. And it's just, a, it's grown over time. And e-commerce allows yeah. you to Bring those people you love and trust the most into this organization. It's so fulfilling to see. I feel like we have a good emergency plan doing this, you know, Mm -hmm. because we both really like what we do and where we work. However, if the worst case scenario ever was to happen, I think right now we feel like if I had to be full time tomorrow, I don't make enough money to replace my income. But I think I could get to that. You know, I I can see that. We're Mm -hmm. off to a good enough start. I can see that easily happening by putting in as many hours as we're putting out plus 40 extra hours a week so right right it could you could get there faster than you might suspect uh, right. following a proven system and having good people helping you on your journey so all right well keep the story going let's move us out of the flipping stuff on ebay making a few bad buys how do you discover what we've got going on around here besides ray kind of saying hey check out the facebook group which by the way for those who don't know before you answer silentgym.com has a link to our free Facebook group. We're coming up on 75,000 members of people who are using the internet creatively to launch and grow beautiful businesses and a focus on Amazon, which is what our guests today are talking about. But yeah, keep it going. So we talked with him. He referred us to the Facebook page. We both joined the Facebook page right away. I found it, I think we both found it very interesting. I dove into it and um, I said, okay, this is something I think we can do. We joined the PAC class. Uh, signed up to open our Amazon seller account, which was like, what, a, a month nightmare? It was a, <laughs> a long time. <laughs> but we didn't give up. But we did. That was the big thing is we almost got to the point of giving up. I said, no, I'm not giving up on this. Yeah. I'm not going to stop. So we yeah. finally got it open. It's what was crazy. the challenge you faced getting it open? It's always something like, you know, we can't verify your address or we've sent you a postcard and you don't get the postcard. Something weird like your middle initial yes, or something? Yes, it was the something. most ridiculous yeah. thing because how they lay it out, it, it's like, you have to have your name exactly the way it appears here. So like on your bank account, if I recall correctly, well, I don't use my middle initial very many places. I don't on the bank account. Right. But however, my driver's license does have my middle initial. So we ended up actually going and we had to go back. They let us go back in and start over again. And when I did it with just putting my middle initial everywhere, 
regardless of what it said, as far as matching your bank account, it opened right up. Yes. I love that. I'm glad we spent some time there because Amazon is very cautious about who it lets open up an account. They, they want to know they're a real person that was in a real location at a real address and everything has to match. Once you get through jumping through those hoops, then you're good to go. But it can be hard starting up a lot harder yes. than it used to be. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that. But, they, you know, they want more sellers. They're recruiting sellers. They want people on their platform selling stuff. But mm -hmm. it, it is a bit of an arduous process at this point. A lot of did you guys get into kick a kickstart group by any chance? We did not know. Okay, because I that's one of the things really talking about the Kickstarters or hearing about it until. Yeah. Well, I know you guys got into coaching, so yeah, you know, we've got that covered. We'll get to that topic in a few minutes, but just to give a quick timeout for people who are maybe seeing them their story align with yours a little bit, the Kickstart is it's thirty seven dollars one time. It's something that you're given the option to do when you sign up for the proven Amazon course. But it's four, it's four classes that help you through what you just described. <laughs> because <clears throat> the setup process, sending in that first item, like what kind of tape do I use? What size box do I use? Just like those yeah. little things that those we call them the, the molehills that feel like mountains when you're getting started. You know, uh, we help you get past those with that. So, but it sounds like you guys navigated that portion of the, of the journey very well. Somehow. We have, yeah. <laughs> We have an interesting division of, of labor here, so we that's the one nice thing about being partners is that uh, she does well, we both do sourcing, but mainly I do sourcing, right? And then she does packaging and shipping, she's the shipping queen. So, nice. I and if I had to send a package to be honest with you, I don't know if I'd be able to do it. So, thank yeah. goodness that she's able to. So, that helps being the two of us as we kind of split up, kind of a division of labor. Yeah. And everything, just the Kickstarter program, that would be something I'm pretty right now. I'm pretty much like, if it's something that may work, I'm going to give it a try. Mm -hmm. You know, let's yeah. just go full bore into it. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you've got a coach at this point and like <clears> right. than you, so you're pretty covered there, but you may benefit from the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. There may be a little, a little tidbit here. I mean, it's less than $40, a one-time payment. We just had a lot of new students jumping in frustrated saying, I don't know how to fill out this form. They keep asking me my name and uh, it's the right. same name I gave them before. And we're like, well, are you sure? Like, yes. Like, oh, wait, no, I've been spelling my middle name instead of using the initial like I did the first time, right? Just little silly things like that that throws off their uh, their process. So yeah, we love helping people through those, those first through hoops. But yeah, well done. I, I love you started talking about the division of labor and doing it as a team just to take a little side road on that for just a second. I've discovered that Couples who do this together, not every couple does. Some people, it's his thing, it's her thing, and we've got other things we do together. But when a couple does the business together and they kind of divide and conquer and figure it out, it's almost like this uh, marriage enhancement experiment. You know, the frustrations of it and the, the triumphs of it, we're doing it together. It's something we can tackle together. Whether it's rising or falling at any given time is almost irrelevant to the point I'm making is, we're doing it together and our relationship's kind of benefiting from like these new challenges. This is kind of cool, right? Have you guys experienced much of that yet? You haven't been doing it too long, but I'm just curious, like maybe Christine's take on this is better than the guy's take. Like you verbalize <laughs> that for me a little bit. Have you, have you experienced well, any of that yet? So I will say this, Silas is very passionate about things that he like, you know, wants to discover. So he'll dive down the rabbit hole and he went down the Amazon rabbit hole pretty deep. And he was like, let's do this. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this, you know? And so I did meet him with a little bit of resistance. Let's call it the, the, the wisdom of hesitation. Yeah. And, um, and he was just like, you know, did you do, did you do any training? Did you watch any training? Did you do any training? Did you watch any training? And I'm like, get off my back. I will do it when I'm ready. Yeah, and then one day, like, that's part of the challenge of it too. You guys you know? still do yeah. that, you know, so but ask me a question, I go, it's in the pack training. <laughs> I can you show you where that? it is. <laughs> so, and then one night I just thought, you know, I just, I have to do it. Like I can see how much this means to him. And so, because it means so much to him, it needs to mean something to me. Mm. And so I sat down and I started going through the training and I don't know, I don't think that we've ever had like a point. We've never really argued about the business. Like sometimes because I am the shipping coordinator, sometimes I feel a little overwhelmed, like trying to get things out the door, but I think that overall it's been great. And, you know, he and I 
we don't really argue about anything. We don't, I mean, not too much. Yeah. Although not. it's usually you can go on, when are we going to get the next box out? When are the next boxes going out? I'm like, oh, I haven't, the well, boxes gone out. So, and then usually she's like, I was up till 11 doing boxes. <laughs> and you were in bed. Yeah. So like, leave me yeah. alone. <laughs> I, I just, I, I love to see couples navigating this together right? and, and all, you know, the, the relational benefits of just kind of tackling it together. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just fun for me to observe. You know, I, I made the observation not too <clears throat> long ago because our, this community is, I mean, this, this has been 20 years of my life's work and, and you sit back and you reflect and like, what, what's been really built here? What's happened here? And I was proposing, I think what we may have been doing for the past 20 years is helping save marriages. <laughs> like, it's like better than marriage counseling. The, the, it, exactly. Like the number of people that have, if they've said, okay, let's do this together. And yeah. typically one brings the reluctant one along. And then a lot of times <laughs> it's the reluctant one that kind of takes charge eventually. And then they're, they're doing this together <laughs> and they're seeing it was how much better things are now that they've tackled this monster together and made something yeah. of it. Right. So I just, I love, I love that dynamic more all the time. Um, and it really forces you as a couple to communicate with each other, yes. you know, because he can't, he's not going to do something <laughs> without me and I can't do something without him, you know, in the business. And so, I don't know, I think it's, it's been great for us so far. So and, and I love what you said. There was a lot of wisdom and something that just kind of, you, it just flowed out of your mouth, Christine. I loved it was, it meant so much to him. I decided it needed to make something, it needed oh. to mean something to me. That's like marriage 101 right there, dude. Like <laughs> any spouse could say that at any time about, you know, the person they're married to, either the husband right. or the wife. It means so much to them. It needs to mean something to me too. Mm -hmm. It's such a healthy perspective. I love it. So yeah, yeah. I, I think that's going to help some people kind of think this through a little bit. Not that you have to do it with your partner. You know, my wife does very little with our Amazon business, but I bounce a lot of the big serious decision points off of her quite just seeking her wisdom and her like, you know, what's your perspective? What I, would we be good at this? Like, who's the right person for this job? She, she helps analyze those, but she doesn't go to the warehouse and put tape on boxes. You know, we used to, I'll do that when the kids were young, but you know, the business has matured and changed, but I just love spending a little bit of time on those kind of dynamics as we plow through the story, but yeah, let, let's keep it going. Tell me some more about the Amazon journey here. So I think we talked about it, you know, a big part of it for me was being able to have financial independence no matter what, you know, for both of us. So, or at least survival for both of us, no matter what. So we were talking about it. We were getting going. We were working through the PAC class and, you know, we, and you, I think you can, well, I know for a fact that you can build a very successful business just using the PAC class. So but for us, we were talking about it and saying for what we're trying to do, you know what, they do have the coaching and to talk a little bit about that. So we talked about it and explored that. And my feeling was, what other business could we start for? I know, I'll know i just throw the number out there that I told her. I said for like $10,000, what other business in the world could you start and be able to start with today? to where you could build financial independence for your family and maybe some legacy as well too. And, you know, uh, when you talk about like coaching, when you talk about classes, product, inventory and everything, that's kind of my, I'm kind of like, okay, that's probably about the number for everything all in to get yeah. you started. I'm like, so if we fail, what's the worst case scenario here? Okay. So we have a credit card bill or something for $10,000 and we have to figure out how to pay, you know, $10,000 out, out of our bank account or something. So I said, that is seemingly pretty low risk in the grand scheme of things. I mean, if we opened a, a franchise of some kind, you know, people pay a half a million dollars, a million dollars. Right. And it doesn't start to pay off for eight years. <laughs> Right, right, right. We're talking about my worst case scenario is $10,000 and, you know, a loss of free time, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> or a loss yeah. of some Saturdays and Sundays and some time after work. Yeah. Well, let me speak to what you, what you just said. I mean, we have people come to us. Sometimes they'll call us at the office and say, okay, I've only got $30,000. I want to go. And I keep all of that in the bank. You need a few hundred to start. And if you want some coaching, now you're going to be working one-on-one. -on -one, you're going to pay a little more than that. But obviously, because we got some very successful students who dedicate some of their time to be coaches and speed the process up for you. Some people see the value in that. Some people don't. But a few hundred dollars is all you need for everybody. And like you said, 10,000. Yeah, that's 
coaching, all the tools, initial inventory, everything like yeah. that is way, that is plenty of money, way more than adequate. But I, some of my favorite success stories, just, you know, so the listeners are aware, people who started with a few hundred dollars, the proven Amazon course, $39 a month, Keepa, the vital tool, $20 a month and some money for inventory. That's it. And they started mm -hmm. there and built a beautiful mm -hmm. business. Great. And one guy, uh, he's actually my aunt's chiropractor is one of the best examples. Uh, started with a couple hundred dollars. Once he had enough money, cash flowed, never added another penny of his own money in. Started with $200, bought coaching, ramped his business up, paid off tens of thousands of dollars of student debt in the first few months of his business, less than a year, far less than a year. Just ramped it up, went all in. He was serious. And last I spoke to him, I need to get an update, but he had taken his practice down from five or six days a week down to two or three days a week. Last I talked to him, that's been about a year ago, wow. just killing it. So yeah, you're absolutely spot on that. The, one of the commitments I made 20 years ago to myself and to the community was I'm not going to teach stuff that requires you to spend a whole bunch of money and hope it works out someday. I want to teach stuff that's low risk, low investment required that could grow into something substantial while taking minimal risks at every step, because that's what the internet makes possible. That's how the internet changed business. Those models are now possible. So yeah, I love that you spent some time on that. Thanks. All right. Well, keep, let's keep it going, Silas. You know, uh, so you got your coach, how's coaching going or, you know, how's your business doing? Take it wherever you'd like. Tell me more. So, about it. yeah. So the coaching, we, we work with Travis and Michael really enjoy them both. They're two totally different people, which is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, so outstanding. Michael, which Michael? Um, we're, we have more, more John. More okay. John. Right. We yeah. got a couple of Mike mm -hmm. coaches at this point. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah, so Miami, Mike. Miami Mike. Yeah. That, <laughs> Miami, Mike. Miami Mike. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> yes. Not Indiana Mike. All right. No. So that really helped to get us off to, I think, again, I, I know that we could have figured it out by going through the pack classes, which we went through, but the coaching got it. It was like a bolt of energy. Let's put it that way, because we were able to, you know, in our first, we were able to go through one coaching session and be able to go, okay, aha, we put it all together, mm -hmm. right? And be able to get started. So, so we um, got started. We actually, I guess, just to go through the timeline here, we sent in our very first shipment, a small shipment to Amazon the week after Christmas. So it arrived just before New Year's. So we did actually, I have no idea how, but we did actually sell something the week between Christmas yeah. and New Year's somehow, because that's just when we sent the package in. But really, our year started in January. So in January, I, I brought up our numbers before we started. So in January, we did a little under $3,400 in sales. We were really, we found some duds and we found some studs, I guess you could call them. Right. So we just kept trying to pick it up, learning, using the techniques that we learned in additional coaching. So February is when we had uh, the business started to grow a little bit and take off a little bit. So February was basically, we call it a, a $10,000 month. So we were super happy about that. So we actually did $9,945 in sales in February, but February is the shortest month of the year. So we joke, we lost a couple of days due to that. So it would have easily been over ten thousand. Yeah, let's call February ten thousand. I'll, I'll go exactly. with that. I'll we're, go we're calling it ten thousand because we got you know yeah. we, we got we missed a couple of days. So we were really happy with that. Um, and this month we're off to a pretty good start as well. Or for March we were down a little bit. Um, we were eighty eight hundred dollars for March. This month we're off to a good start. So I think some of the lessons that we've learned along the way is really we're still only doing this for you know we're just three months into this so right and, and we still, still have full time jobs right this we have full time jobs very part time and, gig yeah yes yes this is part time for us we try to put in time at night almost every night and on the weekends you know usually like at, originally probably for the first two months I was working both Saturday and Sunday pretty much full days. And then working between two to four hours each night, maybe two to three hours each night. So putting in quite a bit. I'm not putting in quite as much now. Now, and I can, I'll get to this in a minute because one thing that Travis has talked to us about is working on the business as opposed to in the business at yes. this point. But, you know, one thing that I found is that I always kind of got, and she can always joke, is like, or it's kind of a joke around here, is like, I got it really driven by trying to find new aces. Okay. You know, it, just I, here's my goal for today. Find aces, find aces, find aces. So when we were starting, really a lot of it was test to see, okay, we would always buy enough to get free shipping. 
or five units if there wasn't shipping. And then that would give us enough to kind of test it out and see if we had a product that was kind of a stutter or a dot, right? right? And then go from there. Now we're kind of seeing some of the benefits. We still need to keep finding new ASINs all the time. But now we're starting to actually kind of see some of the beauty of the business mm-hmm. where we've been doing replenishments now of the ASINs that are winners. And the ones that are losers, we're able to now start clearing out of inventory. We did a little bit of that last month, and we're doing a little bit of that, that this month, too. So, but, you know, I guess it'll, it'll probably take, my guess is a year to find, to really feel like we have a portfolio. And I, I think of it as like a portfolio, but a portfolio basis in our inventory. Yes. Yeah. At the pace you're on right now, how many ASINs have you found so far? Oh my gosh, oh, how many way over found? 200. Like 200. But that doesn't right. mean they're all successful yeah. or things we're selling. Or- sure, just total oh. test worthy ASINs. And then yeah. of the approximate 200, how many of them have turned out to be winners so far, would you say? So I went through those the other day and we have about 35. I would say, I would say that are real true winners that we want to keep replenishing. Mm-hmm. You know, we had one winner that we didn't get an IP complaint, but we got an attorney letter. So we had to get, or it was for two ASINs. So we had to 86 that, you know, we've had some other things. We've had some ASINs that were good that aren't good any longer. So I keep them on our list because, you know, we'll hope that they'll come back or the market will change. They typically do. So, yes, some are better Mm -hmm. than others. You know, we have, now we have a couple products that we're getting almost daily sales on. We have others that sell, but they don't, you know, maybe once a week or so. So. And those are great as well. Those are some of my favorite ASINs. We're going to sell just a few times a month under the radar. I don't have to worry about ever overstocking it because we're only buying a few yeah. at a time, right? And if for some reason that ASIN vanishes, we've only got a few in inventory. And I think um, when you're newer, you get excited about the ones where you can order 100 units at a time. This is awesome. Yeah. Until you realize that you know you send in that first big shipment and that's when Amazon comes in and goes, oh, by the way, uh, we're going to buy 50,000 units at half the price that you were charging. In- yes, <laughs> and that's a fear like, of mine oh. too for getting an IP complaint or something, yep. you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. And then another thing that I, I will, we, we've talked about kind of jokingly and, and but absolutely deadly serious too. I talked with, I can't remember if I talked with Michael about this or Travis, but one of the coaching meetings recently, I said, you know, here's the other thing I'm starting to wonder, like some of these products that we do sell and do well with, you know, we have a few is how do you source enough of it? Mm-hmm. In order to keep replenishing it yeah. too, yeah. you know, without having Walmart or Target or Kohl's or wherever you're sourcing it from, tell your your you know we've had an internet retailer shut us down already too. So yeah, ordering too much, yes, yeah. exactly. That's part so, of the game. That's definitely part of the game as well. But as Brian and Robin Joy, two great coaching leaders on our team, say all the time, you know what fixes that? Finding more ASINs. You know, no matter <laughs> no matter what the challenge is with with this particular model, and keep in mind too, I think you guys are fully aware, but this is just as much for the listener's sake as for yours. This is one of good number of strategies. Yeah, they're extremely lucrative, just with Amazon. But this is the entry level. This is you know getting those wheels turning, figuring out your system, how you're going to work together, what your business structure is going to look like, what's it look like to scale, how much time we're going to put in. Making money while you learn. I call it, you know, earning while you learn. Like, you know, if only college worked that way, right? Yeah, we're we're paying you because you're producing a great product as you learn the systems that allow you then that foundation to do all the other beautiful models that you're going to do later. Uh, You know, you guys could easily be stepping into branded bundles by this time next year, if not sooner, for example. Get one of these brands that suddenly, you know, gets really hot and you build a relationship with that brand and, Maybe now you're doing some consulting with that brand and you're helping them represent themselves on Amazon and other platforms getting paid to do it, right? So there's just so many other yes. great models that, that bubble up out of this. But at the same time, this could very easily be like, you know, podcast episode 754, my friend Kang, $3 million, completely automated OA replens business run by two guys in his warehouse. And he just checks yeah. the stats, right? So, I mean, anything in between. Hey, we'll get back to the show in just a moment, but I want to tell you about today's sponsor briefly. It's Aura, a repricer for resellers, Amazon, other platforms. Primarily in our community, they have a lot of fans on the Amazon platform. I've told you many times that on our leadership team of 100 plus of us, there's a good handful of popular repricers. Well, Aura is one of the favorites. 
and it's used by many great leaders on our team. And they've got a special offer for listeners to this show. For only $27 a month, you can get a very powerful tool that helps optimize the velocity and pricing of your ASINs. It's perfect for replens sellers. If you want to try it for only $27 a month, again, if you're a new seller, you're not using Aura, you're not doing over $10,000 a month or so yet, but you're on the newer end, this is an offer you got to go check out. You can go to silentgym.com slash Aura, A-U-R-A, to see the special offer. Sign up for the 14-day special and they'll automatically flip you into a one-year new seller offer after they check out your application. Pretty sweet offer, great low price. They're looking to recruit in some of the newer sellers from our community. And I think you're going to love what you see if you go check out this offer. Again, that's silentgym.com slash A-U-R-A to check out Aura's offer for a great, powerful repricer to help you speed up the velocity and the sales results you're getting in your business. All right, let's get back to the show. But at the same time, this could very easily be like, you know, podcast episode 754, my friend Kang, $3 million, completely automated OA replens business run by two guys in his warehouse. And he just checks yeah. the stats, right? So, I mean, anything in between, all uh, so many options, but you guys are doing great. Do you happen to know your margins on this? It's, yes. Be irresponsible not to ask that question. I pulled up all the numbers. So I've got a computer behind what we're talking on now. So I, I knew I better know our numbers for the podcast. So we did sign up for seller board a while ago. That was so something that we had talked with Travis about was we were we were accumulating quite a few different ASINs and testing them out. We didn't have a good accounting strategy. We have everything in an Excel spreadsheet. Right. And uh, so and I told him, I said, you know, I got to figure out, like, are we actually making money or not? Because it could be easy to lose track of that. He's like, you need to pump the brakes and you guys need to just set, just make sure you have everything organized. We talked to Michael about this too. Everything accounted for. So one of the things I went out and signed, for, signed up for was seller board. Mm -hmm. So got that, put everything in there. So yes, I do. So our sales for the year were over, um, we went over 23,000 yeah. today for the year. Which I'm pretty happy with for, That's for one, one quarter. Early April, over 23K. That's beautiful. Yep. So, our, let's see here, our margin is 15.37% for the year, and our ROI is 30, 35.79. Nice. Now, that's that's very nice. So, you've netted, doing some quick math, 35, 3600, something like that for your efforts so far, net. But yeah, a, so you've got a lot of inventory out there. 3500 for our net, correct. You've got a lot of inventory out there that you haven't sold yet, too. Correct. Yeah. We're sending in a I mean, we send, what did we send last? We're saying we're, our, our goal is to have inventory go every week, yeah. multiple boxes. I think what yeah. we sent 200 pounds last week. We have a, I think two box that, shipment going out yesterday. Yeah, so, like 100 pounds this week. So, yeah. Yeah. and we yeah. have another 50. Well, we don't go 50. So, <laughs> a lot of times when, when new sellers talk. We sell new sellers talk about how much net they've earned so far. They're like, man, I put a lot of work in for yeah, thirty five hundred, four thousand dollars. Like, oh wait, I've got eighteen thousand dollars of inventory sitting at Amazon's warehouse that's going to yes. sell for at least like right. So you add it all up. Like if you just stopped working now and let the machine churn, there's another eight nine thousand dollars drifting mm -hmm. into your account over the next yes, hour, right. So. You got to keep that in mind as well, the value of inventory sitting out there. But that that's a beautiful business. And just to go back to something you already said, Silas, how many businesses out there where you could wade in nice and slow? You got the option to get a coach or not. You got the course. It'll take you through these steps. Really, to me, it's a matter of speed and margin, which are the, those are the two topics I like to talk about when someone's considering coaching. Do you want to go further faster? Do you have the margin in your life to do so? You know, relational, emotional, financial, scheduling margin right? To go further faster. If you do, let's go. If you want to take your time, that's fine too. But there's just not a lot of business options out there. When you start talking about RO, ROIs of approaching 40%, right? and you're still kind of feeling your way through this thing, like go find me an investment that can lock that in for you in just a few months, right? Right, that's, right, right. That's a nice Yeah, I'm ROI. really happy with that. And that especially... will, but once you annualize that, I mean, you've done that yes. in three months. Multiply that number by four over a year. That's a nice ROI, dude. 
<laughs> well, yeah, we're really happy with it so far. And, you know, I think of his work, what else could we get? I work in financial services. Where else could you get a 35% ROI? It's not, not risk-free, but your risk is limited because I know we can sell everything. It's yes. just a matter of what can we sell it for? If we yes. want to get rid of it, we can get rid of it on Amazon. Right. And so. maybe lose a dollar or two is your worst case scenario on most days. Right. That's the yeah. beauty of the model. Yeah, mm-hmm. it really is. Because you, you're, you've invested in a hard asset. It's, I've often equated to real estate. If you could go buy you know, 50 houses anytime you wanted to and hold on to them for a few weeks and then flip them for a little bit more money. Worst case scenario is you get back what you put into it, right? Like that's, it's just, it's that game with, with smaller things. You know, it's, yes. it's packs of pins instead of duplexes, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Really the yep. same game. But the ROI, once you know what you're doing, man, you can just really move in and out so fast on these great ASINs and, uh, and build something pretty special. You guys are on a great trajectory. Well, how, how can I be helpful to you? What else do you want to share about your story? Well, I think you know, we've only been doing it for a short period of time, but we haven't even had a Q4. I kind of look forward to that. With us starting the week after Christmas, it's right. like, oh, gosh, we're going to have to wait a year for the goodies. So. You know, the big thing for us is we really want to have a six-figure year. And I think if we continue on the path we're on now, we'll easily do that. Oh, easily. Especially with the Q4. Mm-hmm. So we did subscribe to the Branded Bundles training the other day, but we haven't okay. taken that. We need to do okay. that. So, okay. but that's something we'd really like to look into. I'm really excited about that. Christine, she's incredibly creative. I'm not. But I think between the two, once again, I think between the two of us, she can figure out some, if I can kind of figure out how to do it and get the wheels turning. She can be the creative genius behind figuring out, okay, what are the things we want to test for the yes. branded bundles? And I can see that taking the bit helping the business as well, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, Starting to diversify a little bit. And <clears throat> yes. The beauty of that model, as you guys well know, but maybe more for the listeners' sake, if they hadn't heard, what's a branded bundle? Well, you simply take a, a recognized brand name that everyone knows what it is, and you bundle a few units of that or a few units of complementary brands that people recognize with your own unique item that's under your own trademark and brand. And now you've got a listing on Amazon that no one else can compete with. That's borrowing the power of the brand names that everyone recognizes, right? That's, that's the, the description of it. And we've got some people that have gone all in on that model doing extremely well. Um, but kind of like you mentioned earlier, just want to point out with with most things in life, the Pareto principle kind of comes into play at some point. You guys had said, oh, we found about 200 ASINs that we kicked around and considered, and about 35, 40 of them are, are making us money, right? That's the that's the 80-20 rule, <laughs> yeah. right? You're going to see the same thing with bundles. You're going to see, uh, you know, yeah, we launched 10 bundles, and three of them are making us some cash, man. We love them. The rest, I break even, and one of them we probably shouldn't have done. It's going to be like that. That's the journey, but you just keep throwing those tests out there, and they don't cost you a lot of money each time. <laughs> Getting your money back is a worst-case scenario the vast majority of the time, um, and, and that's the churn. That's the churn of the, yeah. that's what it looks like, and just enjoying the journey, You know, doing it with people you love and adding to your team and bringing family on to help and hiring the little old lady across the street to do some of your packing. And now you got a good relationship and some extra storage space over there. And that's, it's just so fun doing life and doing business with, with a system that, you know, ROI, like you said, that ROI is going to hold pretty steady for you. You've got it down just a matter of scaling. Yeah. One thing she's really good at. So I, I, me, if I never had to go into a store in my life, I'd be totally content. (laughs) So I'm just fine with yeah. doing everything online. That's totally suits me again, digging into Keepa, going out online and working. I'm fine with that. She's in a store, I swear, every day. So one thing that's really helped our business too is like she does a lot of the retail arbitrage and she'll pull her phone out. She tells me she's totally content to go through the clearance aisles, and mm-hmm. the other aisles at whatever store she's in that day and pull her phone out. And I will tell you that that's some of the best products that we found, even though they're not replenishables. Yes. You know, from just a profit standpoint to keep the business going and yep. cash flow coming in to buy more yep. replenishables and buy more test items. That's been a huge help. Again, going back to the division of labor, and she's more than content. She'll take our daughter, or my daughter will have friends over sometimes, and she'll take she'll take our daughter out and she'll take their friends out and they'll go to different stores and they'll buy, she'll make them go through the aisles and pick things things. up. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. We, you know, those of us who do the replants model often say, you know, there's no reason to walk past $20 bills sitting there on the shelf. You know, they're not going to be there next time you go to the store, Yep. 
but <clears throat> why would I walk past this, you know, item that's on sale for $10 that's selling for 60 on Amazon? Uh, yeah, I'll right. buy four of them off the shelf, you know, clearance. Uh, you can't build a sustainable long-term, you're not going to find financial independence on that road, but you certainly will find some really nice ways to kind of, you know, pad your numbers every month. Yes. Little time doing that. And you will get, believe it or not, you'll get to the point where it's running such a machine that you'll just walk right past that clearance aisle because it's like, you know what? <laughs> I mean, maybe there's $80 there. Maybe there isn't. Do I want to spend 15 minutes figuring it out? I don't think so. And you just yeah. cruise mm -hmm. right on by, right? <clears throat> uh, you'll get to that point. Um, once you've got the system and it's churning and, you know, you're doing, instead of doing a few hundred a day, you're doing a few thousand a day. And then, you know, we've got plenty of people doing way bigger numbers than that. And, and uh, then it's mm -hmm. just a matter of managing the team and the system that you've built. But yeah, absolutely. Newer sellers, don't be afraid to go to stores. This is my advice to newer sellers typically is mm -hmm. don't look at all the possible ways you could do this business and say, oh, I don't want that one. I don't like that. I don't have a preference for this. I think I'm going to focus on just this. No, you can't, you can't afford to do that because you're leaving so much money, you know, off the table that you could be mm -hmm. easily grabbing and talking about Q4, um, uh, if you're not willing to go to stores during Q4, that's arguably a fifty to one hundred thousand dollar net profit bad decision. Just go into yeah. a few stores and saying, "Whoa, this rack of inflatables right here, twenty dollars each, are selling for a hundred and twenty. I'll take all forty of them and ask the manager if they have more." Like those, that stuff is out there. It's abundantly out there, but typically it's on the local retail store shelves because you don't have to wait for the three to six weeks for the delivery and then send it into Amazon and everything moves slower in Amazon's warehouses. Q4. Yes. Mm -hmm. But retail arbitrage, you can walk <clears> into <throat> the store, list it for sale as you're laying it into your cart and you get to the front and we hear these stories every year. You're checking out with this cart full of inventory and some of it's selling as you're checking out of the store because you listed it merchant fulfilled. You're going to ship it yourself. Right. And that's one of the things we're trying to work on now, too, that is in addition is that we've been talking more about trying to do some merchant fulfilled. So we just listed recently, it was, it was hazardous, if I recall correctly. Yeah. yeah. So okay. we just listed our, we found, we hired a VA recently, too, that we used uh, legendary VAs for. So we, did, we just wanted to give that a try. We're splitting it with someone else that's a member of the community that's also been on the podcast as well, too. So we decided to do that, to going back to what Travis said and working on the business instead of in the business to help us source. But um, it was something that she found. Um, so we're using this to dabble in FBM because mm -hmm. we do want to learn how to do that as well, too, to continue to grow the business and run. We can do some tests, figure it out a little bit, you know, get our bearings straight. Then we can also do things like you said, we can snap a picture of it right in the snore, put it up online for sale, and heck, it might be sold before you get home. Yeah, it can be. You pick those fast items. That, that's a, <clears throat> that's something we've seen every Q4 for 12, 14 years. Is yeah. the hot moving stuff just flies off the shelves. Yeah. But the beautiful thing about replens is year round, boring items. That's what you that's your bread and butter. That's your stability. Yes. That's the asset you're building, is that list of ASINs. Uh, just year round, sell a handful minimum per month, and uh, you can build a real business. You can change your financial future with with this with this model. Well, what else do you guys want to talk about? Anything else on your on your list, or any other topics you want to kick around? I think it's been a great episode. We've encouraged a lot of people. Now, you had a topic before we hit record today that you wanted to jump yes. into. You want to you want to hit that? Yeah. So, my question for you, what we wanted to ask you about today, is that. I feel like we've had some success getting the business started. Now, one thing that's funny is we're always like, oh gosh, we're doing terrible. You see people doing these giant numbers. And you're like, how, you know, how? He's, like, he's like, we're, geez, we're doing awful. And, you know, so, so it's sometimes nice to hear a little bit of encouragement. Like, oh no, you're doing fine. for like Oh, you really are. No, us. you're doing so, it outstanding. And I'm my own worst critic too. I'm always yeah, harder on are. myself than anyone else. Yeah. So, but. Our big question is like, okay, we've got some momentum. We're building the business. We know we need to continue to find more profitable ASINs. That's what we're doing. We're sending shipments every month. Some are studs. Some are, some are duds. We're, you know, replenishing the ones that work, getting rid of the ones that don't. But it's a lot of time. We spend a lot of time with full-time jobs, especially doing this already. I mean, um, we need to buy another computer. That's one thing. We share the mm -hmm. same computer, so we take shifts on it. But that will help it. You know, the thing we always talk about is how busy we are now is like, 
how do you grow the business to where you see some of the folks doing, you know, what we're doing now in, in three months, but doing 50,000 or 100,000 in a month. I think that's our big question is like, how do you do that? Because I'm having trouble getting down in my mind. Like, how do you even source that much, you know, mm-hmm. uh, material? We're already buying out, you know, like Meyer or other stores and some of the products they have. So, so that's what we wanted to talk to you about today and see what your general thoughts are. Well, there's, there's many ways to scale. And we certainly, we have countless stories. I mean, you can hear them on the podcast. And I think, you know, continuing to listen to some of those episodes, working your way back in time, you're going to get a lot of creative ideas. There's many ways to do what you just described. Go from where you are now to bigger numbers. And a lot of times the mistake newer sellers about your stage start to make is they think to themselves, okay, we're working X number of hours to put X dollars in the bank. So if we want to double the dollars in the bank, we're going to have to double our hours. No, no, you're not actually going to find yourself working less and less and less. The, the more money you want to make, the fewer hours you're going to work over time. I mean, look at Kang as an example, multi-million dollar online arbitrage replens business. And he's just checking his stats on his, on his smartphone when he feels like it, that's his contribution because over time you're doing the things that only you can do. And you start eliminating tasks from your desk. And to me, some of the saddest stories I've seen are people who have did e-commerce for 20 years and they never adapted those principles. They stayed on the treadmill of checking clearance aisles and putting fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year in the bank, you know, and they lived life on their own terms. God bless them, maybe better than that corporate job that they didn't want. But year after year after year, bring it home, put the tape on the box, ship it out, wait for the orders on eBay, sell a few things on Amazon, go search clearance aisles two or three days a week. Like that's a churn. The beauty of the replens model is as you've already identified, you're building a book of business. You're 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 building a, a collection of ASINs that perform. Some of them perform for a few weeks. Some of them perform for a few months. Some of them turn into brands that you can partner up with in creative ways and turn into entire income streams by themselves. So as this compounds over time and you're replacing yourself, you'll just find yourself working fewer hours and earning more money. So that's how you scale. And there's so many different ways to do it. But in general, finding more ASINs is the path forward right now. Some of them are going to be beautiful. Some of them aren't going to last very long. Like you said, some of them are going to be duds, break-even duds. But even those break-even duds are greasing the wheel for your future growth. What I mean by that is Amazon likes to see more transactions. They don't know if you're making money or not. I would argue they don't really actually care or have a way to know because they don't know what you're paying for your inventory. But if you're generating more transactions, even those break-even or slight loss transactions, they gain you credibility, they gain you exposure, they gain you account health. A lot of the things that make this account that you're building in this business you're building more valuable from Amazon's vantage point, like a suspension in your first month is a much bigger deal than a suspension after 10,000 transactions. And they're like, okay, this guy's been around a while. He hasn't broken a lot of rules. There's something going on here. Let's work it out. Right. So you're building towards more security just with these transactions. And that's a, you know, there's a lot of little factors there that I've, yeah, I've kind of tossed out there, but I just want to encourage you, you are on a great trajectory. And that's one of my favorite business words, by the way, if you just play this out over time, look how fast you went from 3,400 to 10,000, the same amount of effort and work is going to continue to help you on that trajectory. As long as you don't get stuck doing this stuff that you probably shouldn't be doing. Use some of that margin that you're generating to pay a neighborhood kid to put tape on boxes, right? Find that VA like you guys did, that virtual assistant that can find ASINs for you while you sleep. So instead of spending your time looking for ASINs, you're looking through a list of 10 or 15 ASINs that someone else found, finding the five or six that you really like, which only takes you about 15 minutes as opposed to five hours if you'd done it yourself, right? That's the example of systemizing building systems. And it's easier for the for the mechanical math-minded type of thinker to think in systems than it is for more of the artistic brain type of mentality. So for me, thinking in systems comes very naturally. For some people, they have no idea what you're talking about. But the, the easiest, cleanest way to say it is, am I the only one that could be doing what I'm doing right now? If not, I need to be transitioning this to somebody at some point using some of the margin that my business is generating. 
And that first hire, kind of like the instincts you guys have, that first person you hire, it's not someone that creates more convenience for your life. It's someone who goes out and finds money. Ace and hunters, right? So good job on that being your first hire. And I know if it's a if it's a Filipino virtual assistant, you're probably, you know, a few dollars an hour, which goes a very long way on their island. You can get a real powerhouse of a team member added helping you. Yeah. So those are the kind of things that are going to take you in that direction. You're going to find yourself working fewer hours, making more money, and this trajectory of this, this catalog of ASINs continuing to grow. And then it's just a matter of building systems to service your catalog um, and then branch into the other, other income streams that open up as a result. And the other thing that's not necessarily intuitive that I would encourage you guys to do, and this is just the theme. Sometimes people think I'm crazy or I focus on it too much, but I, I, it's too obvious of a pattern for me not to point out is this is a relationship business. So glad you guys have coaches and that was your instinct. You got Mike, you got Travis. Keep adding to that circle of people that you know, like, and trust, know, like, and trust you. The opportunities that will drop into your lap as a result of those kind of connections. And are you guys coming to Orlando, for example? Is that something? Yes. So we did. We, what again, we just jumped in you know, blindly. We said, okay, we're going to get the VIP tickets. Let's go ahead and go. We're actually bringing my daughter and her friend. So Beautiful. we're going to turn into a vacation for them. They're, 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 they're big girls, so they can take care of, you know, they're 15 going on 16. So, oh, they're going to they love this resort, there. dude. It, it is it, right next to SeaWorld, walking mm-hmm. distance, safe walking distance to SeaWorld, and like three swimming pools on site, just plenty of room to spread out, have fun. And they got like those big outdoor checker sets and stuff spread all over the place. It's up, but they'll have all a lot within the safe walls of the resort. So, yeah, it's just a great place for something like that. A couple of teenage girls, but mm-hmm. hopefully, maybe hang out in a few sessions too, learn a few things. We have a lot of teens in our community. We really do. They should come and What's kind of the, do the events with their parents. I'm flying down on Wednesday, if I recall correctly. And then the conference yes. starts on Thursday. No. Is that right? Does the conference starts on Wednesday, right? Uh, it's it's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, Thursday, conference. Friday, Saturday. 23rd so he, through 25th. Yeah. Yeah. You're flying down, I'm flying Wednesday. down on Wednesday, which funny enough, there's other people from Indianapolis area that are on our flight. Mm-hmm. So oh, I great. found that out just from talking to some of the people from the community. Oh, cool. And then our daughter's last day of school is on Thursday. Yeah. So they're flying down her, Thursday night. Yeah, they're they're all flying down Thursday late night. <laughs> so gotcha. she's gonna join us a day late, but yes, I will yeah, be there. Well, yeah, it, as much night. of it as you can be there and I, I would encourage divide and conquer and have conversations with people. And one of the things yes. that I always say when we're, when we're live on site at, a, at an event like this is ask as many people as possible how's business tell me about your business what's working what isn't working how's it going teach me something here's the problems i'm facing help me solve these and you're just going to walk away with you know a notebook of ideas that you're gonna have to find the top five because there's 50 really good ideas you have to say okay these are the five i'm going to commit to here's the one i'm going to tackle first and i'm going to work to the rest as i can without dropping the ball on the stuff that's already working. You don't want to lose focus on the stuff that's already working. Uh, but yeah, it, it's an incredible event. But on the topic of relationships, we've seen masterminds form and new partnerships form and new products launch. Uh, it's, a, it's a special community for sure. You're going you're gonna to enjoy it. I'm so glad to be a part of it. For the listeners, uh, it's May 23rd through 25th. Theprovenconference.com is the website. Three words, The Proven Conference. If you don't have tickets yet, we're approaching 700 people registered. So we could actually sell out here in the near future. It might be sold out soon, but we'd love to have people there. And there's live stream options as well for those who can't make it. So yeah, the, the day you can't make it, if you're able to, Christine, you should check out the live stream. At least probably yeah. you get all those recordings too. So no pressure. But um, well, yeah, good topic. Do, do you feel like I answered your question? Did, did we absolutely like, ideas to yeah. get the wheels turning? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Very for good. sure. Very good. Well, it's it's a journey, and uh, you know one of, one of the ways I like to kind of think of it, and I have to remind myself of this all the time as an entrepreneur. You know, we're always big ideas and waking up in the morning like, oh, there's eight things I want to do today, and we end up getting two of them done, and we beat ourselves up. We overestimate dramatically. Overestimate how much we can get done in a bit done in a day sometimes. Yeah. Also, I agree with that. We underestimate dramatically <laughs> the power of trajectory and where we'll be in a year. If we just keep doing what we're doing, just keep doing it. Where's this taking me? 
this churn that you guys have, this rhythm. And I would say, you know, you need a day off a week. It's not sustainable to go all out seven days a week, very long. You'll burn yourself out, right? We're not built for that. You can do it for a short period of time, but, but you need to rest into a routine and just rec recognize the pace and the trajectory and where it's taking you is a beautiful place. And just, I agree. One thing I've talked about is let's give it a year all out. And by all out, I don't mean we have to work every minute of the day, but give it a year all out. Give it our absolute best for a year. If it doesn't work out, hey, at least we can say we gave it our all. I don't want to feel it something because I didn't give it my all. But then I feel like if we give this, I'm totally confident that if we build this business over the course of a year, do what we're learning with coaching, do what we're learning in class, do what we're learning from you know, other reading in other places or talking to people, I know that anyone can grow it into to a business. And I feel like we actually, I feel like we actually have a business, you know? Oh, you yeah, absolutely do. You know, we you actually have a real something. business. At this point. I mean, just from the numbers you gave me, you've accomplished something that the vast majority of businesses will never see. Yeah. I Most, joked the other day, Hey, we're going to get a 1099 is real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this isn't monopoly money, man. This is yeah. that you're putting profit in a bank in the first few months of starting your operation. A lot of businesses go under at a total loss within the first few years. Yeah. Just most businesses, that's what they experience. But that's why we love these models is because the risks are low. You're waiting in. The trajectory is a little slow at first. You know, the velocity of the trajectory is a slow pattern, but, but where it takes you over time is somewhere really special. So we, we're all about slow and steady wins the race, or some people want to move a little faster. Steady wins the race. Your habits, the pattern that you establish, those are important things. Have we found our 15 new ASINs this week yet? Or how many of you have committed to? If not, we're going to have to work a few more hours. We're going to go. Have we bought our $1,000 of inventory yet today? If not, we've got to put in a little more time. Right? You establish those kind of patterns to your business, uh, and that trajectory will take you somewhere. Yeah. Truly I will mention one thing that for, for anybody that's new out there that I do find helpful, being someone that's new too, is... You know, when looking for ASINs, being engaged in so many things, it can be really tough. Mm -hmm. And one thing I found is like, especially in the very first month, is we would have days where like I could I could sit down on a Saturday and work for eight hours and maybe find one thing, right? But I think you have to have determination. Just don't give up. Just keep looking. Because there was one day I remember where I was so frustrated. I, I found one thing. And the only reason I found it is because I was like, all right, this is close enough. I'm going to take it. You know, the ROI is not great, but I'm going to take it. So I found one thing today. But then the next thing, I found five items that were potential good replans in just a couple of hours, right? Mm -hmm. But if I would have stopped that on that Saturday and not tried again on that Sunday, I would have missed out on five great things that one of them is our best selling item. So yeah. I think, especially when you're new, is just make a commitment and keep going with it, you know, keep going at it. Don't get discouraged because it can be tough getting started. But the other thing too, is talking, people talk about gating. Well, the more we find, the more we sell, you know, now we get ungated in many more items way more easily than we used to. Yeah. <laughs> Great they, point. After selling 40, 50, 60 items, the gates just start falling open. That's what we tell yeah. the yeah. sellers all the time. I feel like I'm gated and everything. We'll sell something, anything, even yes. break even get used to the system, send in some shipments. Suddenly you're on gated in so many things. And it's a beautiful feeling when Amazon says, Oh, you're gated in this product. Would you like to click a button and apply to be ungated? Yes, I would click. Congratulations. Based on your sales history. Here you go off to the races. Yeah. And you'll see that button sooner than you might suspect. So you don't have to go send in 10 units and get an invoice and all that. Like it, it's just not necessary. Just sell what you're able to sell. Yep. Gates start falling open. Yet another benefit of, you know, more transactions. One thing we learned from coaching that Travis was real good about talking to us about is, and I've seen other people that, that you know, will maybe do it a little bit differently, but the very first thing we do when we look at a product is we check to see if we can get ungated. If we can't, we immediately move on. So if I can't get ungated, I probably have only lost 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just immediately, I don't look to see, can I source it? I don't look to see is it profitable or anything else. I just immediately see, can I get on gate or not? If I can't get on gate, I move on. Yep. Done. Yep. yep. And, you know, maybe add it to a list of ASINs to visit later. That's what I encourage sometimes. Yep. To, like, oh, that looks like it might be good. Oh, I'm gated. Move on. No, I copy paste. I have a list over there. And once I start seeing these gates just kind of falling open in front of me, yep. I'm going to go back and hit that list and see what some of those 
some of those guys look like the, the more prominent. Get through as many as you can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, hey, it's good hanging out with you guys. I really appreciate mm-hmm. your your time. And uh, unless you got anything else to run past me, I think we've provided a lot of value to the listeners today. No, I'm grateful you had us on. So it was yeah. when when you originally reached out to us, I said, is he talking to the right guy? <laughs> <laughs> we were laughing about it because I always get the, the conscious of like, hold on, all these other people are doing so much better than us. Like, yeah. It, well, we we like, no, no, our... we should do it. Let's just do it. So everything well, else glad you did. Faith that we've done so far. So. Yeah, well, we we really enjoy seeing a wide spectrum of experiences and backgrounds and, and results. And, and something that we started getting a lot of requests for a few years ago was, hey, Jim, you got all these big success stories from your community. And that's great. But I need someone who's like, you know, like me, kind of like, I'd be yeah. thrilled to have a $10,000 a month, right? There's a lot of people who are there. And to hear from someone like you guys, it's just starting this journey and got there fairly rapidly. That's going to be very encouraging for them. To know what's possible with some work and you've, you've shared a lot of your system. So thank you. Thank you for that today. Yeah. You've done yep. a great service to the community and you're probably going to have some people coming up to you at the event saying, Hey, you're the guy from the podcast. Some great conversations. <laughs> Hopefully it pays off for you guys. Well, we look forward to it. Thanks yeah. for having us on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, it was, it was certainly my pleasure. Well, let me talk to the listeners who joined us today for just a moment. Okay, guys, and, and make sure that uh, close out with a couple of good comments for them. If this is the first episode or one of the first episodes that you've ever heard of our show, we're so glad you joined us today, but I got to let you know, like I mentioned earlier, we've got hundreds of these episodes with very real people who in many, possibly even most cases had no prior e-commerce experience, stepped into our community, built a beautiful business, became part of the family of business building warriors using the concepts from the proven Amazon course, which is the world's leading Amazon seller training course from our vantage point. It's been around longer than anyone else with more success stories. So I think I can call it that safely. Jump in if you're ready to get started, or at least at a minimum, get over to our Facebook group. There's a link at silentgym.com to our Facebook group, completely free business building warriors around the world, using the internet creatively all day, every day, helping each other out. It's a beautiful thing. We'd love to have you be a part of it as you're starting to check out what this group is all about. But on behalf of the team that puts these episodes together and my great guests today, Silas and Christine, thanks guys. Can't wait to see you in Orlando. Look forward to it. Thanks for having us on. We'll see you there. And and everyone else who helps uh, make this community so special. God bless you, business building warriors. And we'll have another great episode for you very soon. Thanks for joining us for today's show. So glad you were here with us. I want to give you one last reminder of today's sponsor, Aura. That's the repricer that has a special offer, especially for newer sellers. If you haven't sold $10,000 in a single month yet, they wanna help you reprice your inventory to keep it as competitive as possible, maximize your margins, maximize your velocity, and you don't have to manually reprice everything all the time. To see the special offer, go to silentgym.com slash Aura, A-U-R-A, and they'll lock you in to a one-year $27 deal that is simply incredible. That's a very attractive price to get your entire catalog repriced with Aura. Thanks for the sponsorship. Hey, we'll see you next time.